we have definitely shared challenges, passion, determination. The competitiveness of the class. To each other, and on the water is always a big fight. The boat downwind is incredible. Leonardo. Anything new starts with a spark or an idea. 
There are lots of beautiful maxis out there, and lots of them are swans. You're president of Mountain Swan, but above all, you're a serial maxi yacht owner. What is the spark that makes you want to go further? What makes you want to invest in a new maxi? Is it a new technology, like an innovative hybrid propulsion system? Is it a lifestyle need, like a beach club? What makes you say, it's time to move on? First of all, I would like to give a real warm and felt welcome to all of you. I think it's always a very lovely moment when we have the opportunity to share with you what is going on in this incredible world of uh, Nato Swan. When we look at the video, I myself feel impre feels impressed for the, how many things are going on in the company. Uh, but uh, today we're here really to, stop, uh, to speak about the Maxis, uh, which is uh, the dimension of uh, Nato Swan since uh, the very beginning. I remember being a kid uh, and when I saw the first uh, Swan 36 uh, Tarantella, the, 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 I said, oh my god, this is a ship. At those times, 56 years ago, that was considered huge. But since then, Nato always had had the nature in the big boats, the 65 and the 76, and thereafter always in the big boat. And I think uh, uh, I start from uh, how I became a passionate maxi owner. Uh, it, it was because I fell in love with Swan before any other boat. And when I uh, discovered the yard in Finland, uh, I was uh, so impressed for the quality and the reliability and the passion and pride people would work with. And uh, uh, later on, I said to myself, uh, these boats uh, can only be built uh, at the level they, they are and for what they represent, uh, but in Finland. The culture is so deep in the people in this region in uh, the north of uh, uh, Finland uh, that uh, I think uh, by combining forces, uh, these different cultures, uh, the Argentinian, the Italian, uh, the Finnish, uh, and many others, we can there obtain the best that the world uh, uh, can uh, make. Um, about me being uh, um, a maxi owner, yes, I think um, uh, it's, it's the beginning of the trouble for uh, many of the people around us uh, because uh, when you are passionate uh, and when you are, uh, somebody smiled, that is Anders, uh, smiled uh, quite deeply because you know what I'm talking about. But when you are uh, um, a sailor, a passionate sailor, and uh, uh, you spend also time. Uh, with the object that you love, uh, it's then when you start uh, letting your mind go. And that is the beginning of giving all these people around us so much trouble with the new ideas, new inventions, new trials, etc. But I think uh, uh, I'm really here to express more than anything else uh, the appreciation for people that are extremely professional in taking their job so seriously, so meticulously, and uh, always having that mind, yes, the ideas, the innovation, uh, the, always the new things you want to add to the yachts, but always uh, with what is key for Nato Swan, which is the reliability. And you can make so many beautiful things, but if you don't make them reliable, and as well as beautiful and performing, you are doing nothing. And this is about the culture of uh, Nato Swan. I have uh, taken the microphone for too long, but I thank you again for being here. I would like to uh, give it back to Claire. Thank you, Leonardo. Uh, so we see an owner thinking ahead, but shipyards like Nato Swan are also always thinking ahead. Giovanni, can you tell us a bit about the process behind the creation of a new Swan Maxi like the Swan 108? What does this yacht offer that's different from previous ones, like the 120, the 115, the 98, and what are its key features? Okay, um, I mean, uh, we to stay live and active on this market, you have to uh, to to evolve continuously. It's not a matter, as I always say, of a revolution, but it's a matter of an evolution. But evolving uh, uh, in a so difficult world, uh, you have to to listen to the owner's needs uh, and uh, 
I mean, only the internal hearing is not enough, so that's the reason why what we granted a couple of years ago is uh, to work more and more in a, a larger team of people from inside and people from outside. And I think that what you see here, every year, in this kind of design uh, conferences that we are offering, uh, is uh, um, to look at the team that is working on, uh, on, on this. And uh, what are the needs uh, that are coming to life uh, more and more? Uh, I mean, uh, only 20 years ago, uh, boats were not terrace on the sea. They were, uh, I mean, complex uh, uh, sailing, uh, uh, how to say, uh, workshop where you had winch everywhere and ropes everywhere. Uh, and now you, you need to have performance that are better than what we had 20 years ago. But on the other side, when you stay in a bay, you have to have a terrace on the sea. Uh, so comfort is one of the characteristics that uh, the new boat has for sure. Um, performance, performance especially by light wind is super important because it's not only to enjoy sailing more but it's also to express the sustainability that is embedded in our uh, sailing yachts. But if you cannot put, uh, uh, I mean, if you cannot say, use sails uh, when there is a low wind or low air, I mean, uh, that's uh, not sustainable. And, uh, and then the GA, I mean, uh, uh, everybody was saying, yes, it's the same yacht, but inside, I mean, so uh, you are down in the dark, uh, and uh, there is no space, uh, and cabins are small, and to arrive in a cabin, you have to go through a, a bath at, uh, ahead. Uh, and here we put a lot of uh, efforts instead to, 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 to get the comfort uh, and uh, uh, the ergonomy that you can have uh, on, on bigger boats, uh, also on big sailing yachts. So thank you, Giovanni. Van, the Swan 108 is a reality, and you're currently full speed ahead on the Swan 88 and the 128. What are some key features on these new projects? Uh, we are full speed, yes indeed. I mean, if you come to visit us, you see how many boats we have under construction at the same time, and also how many we have in development. And say that today we have a full range of maxis from 80 to 128, plus something bigger that is uh, is coming. But it's it's all in the same line. So we have a kind of a dream team where Hermal is the uh, naval architecture and project of the full concept. But then we get some help from Lucio Micheletti and from Misa Poggi for the exterior style and the interior style. So we have a really good team working on on all this. So we have a continuity of line. 88 is a very good, I mean, there is something else to say. Every new model we make has a specific focus, so there is always a reason why we do a model, not just because we need something bigger. So the 88, for example, is compliant with the low line range, which is a rule that gives you a lot of advantages in terms of construction, in terms of usability of the boat, especially when you go charter. So it's a very important boat. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's, a, it's in line with the style we have on deck, like Always on the Maxis ones, we have a really flexibility, variety of possible solutions because the cockpit, the guest cockpit is flat on our boats. We don't have any volume giving something to the interior. So we can play with different layouts, even some customization. And, uh, and inside is a typical four cabin plus two cabin for crew. So we have big apartment for the crew, a crew mess which is also suitable for the family, so it can be a double usage, but it's a perfect platform for charter as well. The 108, uh, sorry, the 128 is, uh, I mean, is a ship, it's a rocket ship. We, we played a lot in all details, every inch has been studied, also with the help of the owner of the Harvard One, which is a very good person in this, and, and Otto will tell you more later on, but we studied every inch of the boat, so it has been fully, fully, fully designed in every detail. Again, it's also a big yacht, so you can have a number of possible solutions on deck as well. And we have this new platform we call Beach Area. You can, you can have a look here in the one way. This is the first time we integrate that. This is coming from a, an idea of Leonardo, which is a proper maxi owner. So we get information and ideas from him a lot. And, um, and inside, it's a huge boat because still with four cabin for guests, but the owner's cabin is a real apartment. So what is more than the one way is that the, the space is absolutely a lot more, and you have the opportunity also to have a proper dining room downstairs, like, like it was Soleone 115. Uh, another thing to mention is that 
all these masses, together with all the line of swan, is ready to integrate our program we call Green and Blue, which is, of course, a program of many technology, including, of course, the, the hybrid propulsion, which today is very important for, for many customers, uh, but also a number of technology, which is not only, I mean, something you use, but it's something also to understand what is the right behavior. I mean, we, in, a, in an active way, in a passive way, we don't have to forget that saving is the most green activity we can do, but also to have some help in, in getting the, the, the behavior of uh, people and guests on board to learn how to be more green uh, in, in, uh, in, in inside, let's say. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Vanni. Well, back to Leonardo. There are shipyards that do full custom builds, and there's an outdoor swan. What sets an outdoor swan maxi in a class apart? Be objective. Well, I think uh, Vanni said a lot, uh, together with Giovanni, on how our DNA is uh, on the max and how we see this uh, as an ongoing evolution. Uh, I think we get a lot from uh, the owners, from the people around and from the crews, a lot. And uh, this is uh, what pushes us uh, to really give freedom to the strong ambition that exists in the yard and uh, be the number one in the sailing maxis. I think what uh, you see, and uh, I will speak for a moment out of presumptuousness, but I think the Swan 108, which most of you have seen in the, in, uh, the show, is uh, second to none. For me, it's the best uh, Swan Maxi so far been built, uh, and uh, I think one of the very best uh, that the world has seen. So I think this, uh, again, not uh, as a uh, presumptuousness, but as an element of pride, because in this process of uh, consistently wanting to deliver the world the best it can find. And, uh, and it's a component of so many uh, elements, uh, and uh, the one you mentioned, the best architect in the world. Uh, man has worked for Gato Swan for 43 years. Uh, not for any other reason, because we have always considered him the best in the world to combine performance and reliability. And joining forces with Lucio Micheletti, with Misa Pocci, with so many te technicians, uh, with the coordination of Vanni, it's a fantastic team of which we are very proud. And uh, this is what is delivering what uh, we see become better and better launch after launch. So don't miss the chance to see the 108. Uh, Giovanni, let's say now the shipyard has created a new project, an owner has come with an idea, and it's time to bring all this together. It's a big job that requires a diverse skill set. Could you tell us about how the team behind the Maxi project is formed? And now we're swan, as Leonardo mentioned, Frears, Foggy, Micheletti, um, but there are also new faces. Can you tell us a bit about the thought and selection process, and is there added value in working with a with a tried and trusted team? I mean, as I said before, and I think that uh, Leonardo, uh, the way he explained, uh, is, is the way we have to work. Uh, um, I mean, first of all, we, we, we started to listen more and more to what uh, was the evolution of uh, the, the, the owner client needs. And, uh, and then we needed also to interpret uh, what we were listening to. And here is uh, where the, build, uh, the, the team has been built. Uh, I mean, at the beginning it was not that easy because it was m uh, much easier uh, to work with the, inter the interior, internal uh, interior designer, with the internal technicians, uh, and only with uh, Herman in, in Argentina. But uh, if you wanted to exploit uh, and do something more and bring some industrial design uh, features, uh, if you wanted to ex exploit and, 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 and stress more and more the, the, the importance of the GA, and, st and then uh, um, all what uh, the, the new technology are bringing in terms of material, of rigging, uh, mast, etc. You had to partner with, uh, um, with external uh, experts, professional guys, etc. And so, uh, also thanks to the, to the tools that we have today to work with external parties, uh, we learn to, 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 to live off brainstorming, to dedicated projects, uh, to develop the different parts of the, of the, of the yacht. 
and this is bringing a, a lot of experience uh, up there where we are and, uh, and the result uh, is down here in the hubble uh, and, uh, and the next will come next year and the year after we have uh, four maxes, uh, 28, 228 to come 50% uh, of them are uh, hybrid and this is also a big challenge for us and couldn't be possible to do it uh, on a stake uh, inside. Thanks, Giovanni. I now would like to ask Michelangelo Casadei a bit about what goes on inside the yard at the core of the Nato Swamp production process. What happens in the moments immediately after a project is confirmed? What is an outer swan production process and how do you manage the rapport with your various suppliers? Thank you, Claire. Good afternoon also from my side. Well, it's really a pleasure to talk about how we build the Maxi and Nato Swan today because that is talking about the work of many, many people that are not here but are part of the yacht that is down there in the end. And uh, while I briefly go through the the process I want also to tell you where we tried, uh, uh, as Giovanni said always, our logic is no revolution but evolution to improve the process and the work in the yard, uh, leveraging on our traditional know-how but also increasing the best practices we are uh, working with. And this is to respond to a very uh, favorable, favorable market situation. As, as we said, we are currently building continuously four maxes at a time. Uh, the 288s and the 2128s and the 108 until two months ago. And uh, it's, it's a process which is a lot in-house because you will understand we do a lot uh, into our facility but there's a lot of uh, integrations from uh, uh, suppliers uh, first of all and uh, uh, professionals also outside. Uh, well, it starts of course with the plug and mold built. Uh, what we try to do is also to uh, standardize and uh, normalize the process we use because every maxi has its own soul, its own uh, uh, target and owner, but the processes that are behind has to be well proven, well tracked in terms of quality to get the reliability that we want. I mean, this boat sailed, uh, after all the testing, this summer 8,000 miles, mid of Finland, two years, uh, with a well proven reliability, which is uh, uh, the best, of course, uh, the result we can uh, we can aim. So, plug and mold, a full CNC, uh, traditionally built, uh, made plug, on which we chose to go uh, then with uh, a full carbon uh, infusion, epoxy infusion mold. Uh, the target for that is to have, of course, mold in same material and, uh, and technology as the future hulls to improve the uh, surfaces, geometries, and uh, level of finishing, minimizing, of course, the ferry work down on that, optimizing the weight and the performance, therefore. Then comes the lamination. The lamination of the hull, of the deck, of the structural parts, and putting them together. And here we leverage on the uh, advanced facility we have, because we have one of the largest oven uh, on the market uh, for the polymerization, we use spring technology uh, for, uh, let's say, carbon uh, epoxy prepreg uh, uh, composites. Um, but also, not just the facility, the people. It's very important to train and to retain uh, teams of laminators uh, that know how to build these kind of boats and are repeatedly uh, building the projects. This is a big value added to, to the final product. And of course, our target is to go zero defects on the day the NDT comes uh, uh, on the construction. In parallel, the joinery uh, will start to build furniture. You know, we are very strong in that. We work a lot uh, internally. Uh, this year, we invested further more in a new five-axis CNC machine uh, for the panels milling. We normally start from a natural veneer, always natural veneer, selection, splicing, uh, milling and assembling of furniture and of course we needed to flexibilize and increase our capacity to feed uh, all these projects that are ongoing. Uh, and this will go, of course, to, that is the part, one of the parts where you make the dream of the owner, of the designer come together with the style that is a, 
uh, of course, the DNA of the brand, the Nordic DNA, but also the uh, lot of complex customization that comes on the interior from the owner's request, and we have to, to be able more and more to uh, fulfill. Uh, then comes the assembly. Here we are also going into evolution. Uh, we wanted to focus more and more uh, our yard that I wish everyone could visit once because uh, uh, we are proud to, uh, to show our work. And uh, uh, one area, I mean, is more and more specialized and team specialized on what is for us the swan line. There we need uh, more principle of uh, lean manufacturing and material handling up to 58 feet where we have repeated construction of yachts. And on the other side is the maxi range with more dedicated teams that will be ongoing for the whole project. And this is a lot uh, related to project management because the coordination of all the actors that are working on that and the uh, connection of the phases of the work and thinking ahead what is coming next and what is, what is the best sequence to execute, this is very important. And also uh, very important to manage in this the contribution of suppliers that on a maxi size uh, are almost all the time not of the shelf but a lot of co-design especially when it comes to innovation. So if I only touch two topics that will be better explained later on, I mean the 88 coming to the water next year, first uh, uh, full electric uh, serial hybrid yacht from Nato Swan. Uh, it's a proven platform but with some uh, co-design to fit the functional needs of this project or the extended beach uh, dual uh, stern kinematic that is on the 108, that is a deep co-design between what we wanted on the product uh, with a supplier who is specialized on that. So managing the complexity and bringing it together in the construction is very important. Uh, in this, of course, uh, many colleagues are working. Key role is uh, uh, the role of project managers. I mean, we all know that this business is still a lot a, a business of people uh, involved uh, and their professionalism, and this is the nice part of that, I think. And, um, uh, and it's also an asset for us to have project managers that have been running several projects on the Maxi site. So the project management organization is on the single on one hand and also uh, specifically on the Maxi on the other hand. Two of them are here. Uh, one is Anders Bertling, who supervised the, the 108 uh, that we are happy to display here at the Monaco Show 2023, and the other is uh, Kim Sundvist, uh, who is currently running both the 88 number one I was speaking about and the future flagship, the 128. That's it from the young. Anders, can you tell us a bit about how you bring projects together at Naltor and how it's added value to the 108 that you were project manager on? Okay, thank you. <coughs> nice to be here and uh, so wonderful to, to see this product in in, the, in this phase where it belongs. So this was a target for us to see the boat in Monaco uh, like this. So really nice. Uh, I want to congratulate everybody and thank you all for your contribution. Uh, as we all say, teamwork is very important and all are contributing. So if you are not contributing, you have a failure in performance or something and you have to pick up the pace and run later on. If everybody are performing on continuous basis, it's like biking 100 kilometers with a steady pace, not rushing, not slowing down. So that's one success. Uh, then we have a focus on planning and synchronization. So we have four main disciplines in design. So if one discipline is left behind, we have to stop uh, because then we don't comply with requirements. Um, we have to have clear milestones and kickoffs uh, and also lessons learned after every milestone. We have everything fresh in our memory, we can improve and we can unite for the next phases of production. Um, and then we also have a hands-on approach. Uh, the project managers, the designers, uh, project engineers, they are always available. Uh, we always walk in the morning through production, 
uh, discuss with the guys to do the job. And most of all, the mindset is the most important thing. Uh, the mindset that you relay to the organization, everybody needs to have the mindset. So, now we deliver this job uh, ahead of schedule in Finland. And I asked the guy, you know, how we did, did we do it? He said, we want it. So, uh, that was something. Um, and not to forget the owner's team involvement. So, that's very important because we have to assure that the owner's requirements are respected and also we follow through until the end. Um, of course there were challenges on this project because we had a lot of interesting features. Uh, one of them, the transom, had uh, 200 requirements that we needed to follow through, through from design until uh, final testing. Um, I don't think I have anything more to add at this moment, but looking forward to the next challenges. Hope you have a chance to see the boat, and hope you like it. Thank you, Anders. <laughs> Can you share some info on the team that's working on the 88 that will hit the water next year and its innovations and hybrid systems? And can you anticipate some news on the 128 that we have full custom now and built? Thank you, Claire. First, uh, 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 with Anders, together we have uh, managed and delivered over 11, 1100 feet of swarm axis. And uh, in case you're wondering, and this has a comfortable lead. <laughs> um, yes, it's um, it's hard work um, sometimes, but also very very rewarding uh, to see these um, beautiful uh, products come together. Um, this is only possible um, through teamwork, and uh, at Nauta we have the most amazing team of people, uh, suppliers, subcontractors. And, um, and it's an honor to work with um, the legendary Hermann Fraers and also the later projects with uh, Misa Poggi and, uh, and Mikel it, it really is. Um, working with the industry, leading um, partners like uh, North Sales and uh, Horsepass, Gurit and, um, and Harken, this all brings innovation into the projects, which is important. On the 88, the hub number one, uh, we, we have partnered with uh, Torquedo, who will deliver a turnkey uh, hybrid propulsion system for the world. This is a very inspiring uh, cooperation, and uh, I think we are learning a lot from each other. Uh, for example, how will the large energy storage bank with two supercharging diesel generators and hydro generation, how will this change? the way the owner will use the boat and uh, it will be a much more silent operation and uh, more comfort on board. This brings me to the, to the, um, that the experienced owner plays an important role here. They can be in a sounding board and, um, and help to understand what this uh, new technology can do on the daily, daily um, living on board the yachts, etc. Then to the, to the 128. Um, it's a big pleasure to work again with this owner and with the owner's representative, Odo Giorgio. Uh, the construction is well on the way up in Finland. And, uh, there's a spectacular interior being designed uh, with, together with Misa Poggi. It's a true, it will be a true super yacht. Um, it will be the largest full carbon construction to date by Nauta Swan. And uh, the 57 meter tall mast from Cyrus Pass 
uh, will also be the tallest mast ever to be stepped on a swarm so far. The delivery is 2025. And uh, thanks, Kevin. So let's pretend that the spark has ignited the project and the project is now in build. I would ask, I would like to ask owners reps, Andrea Ratti, Ulysses Harim, and Aldo Giordo, a bit about their experience having a Maxi Swan built. How many trips to Finland, how many Zoom calls, how, many, how much pain, how much pleasure, before that swoosh of wind in the sails and the Maxi heads off on her maiden voyage. Andrea, the interiors of the 120 were special for Naldor because they were not designed in-house and they were not built in-house. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, thank you, Claire. And uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, it was a pleasure to me to be involved in this project because uh, when we started at the time, uh, 120 was the, 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 the flagship of, of Naldor, so there was uh, um, there were even a, a great responsibility, so all the young were focused on, on, on this, uh, uh, looking for the best in terms of quality, but even the managing uh, uh, the process. So uh, it's, I have to say that it's, it's quite usual for, for a young involved in this kind of, of uh, young dimension and with the complexity that uh, the owner has a specific uh, uh, request and expectation uh, especially from what concerns the interior design. So uh, there's the need uh, to involve in the process uh, 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 an interior designer or even an exterior designer that can come from out of, of, the, of, of the yard. And this is uh, uh, something that should be managed because uh, uh, it's at the same time an opportunity uh, because uh, any uh, designer, we have here several designers, and, and any of, of them had the opportunity to carry on something new uh, in, in the process, uh, but uh, at the same time, this is challenging because you, you should be prepared to accept this, uh, and so uh, at the, all the stages of, of the company, you should be prepared and you should have an, an open mind uh, to accept this and to understand uh, what's, what could be behind. And I, I have to say that. Uh, uh, this was a, a very, very good experience from this side because uh, with the, that guys on the right side of, uh, of, the, of, of the room, uh, we have uh, uh, opportunity to, to, uh, to work together and, and never against one to, to the other uh, to discuss uh, even deeply because uh, for sure uh, the, the role of the, of the owner rep is to drive to the yard, the, the, the owner interest and the, the expectation, but uh, you should be uh, uh, anytime uh, conscious uh, that uh, uh, what the yard could be ready to, to accept uh, and uh, how you can let uh, the yard work at uh, its best. And so this is possible if uh, uh, the, the team, the technical team is ready to manage, as Michelangelo said, uh, is a matter of uh, combining this uh, with the process, uh, and so you have to uh, to be conscious of the importance uh, of this uh, managing, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the effort of the designer in uh, having a vision on what the interior could be, and even the innovation that this could drive within the, the yacht. But at the same time, uh, there's a matter of reliability of, of the yacht itself. And uh, uh, this is part uh, of the final quality of, of, of the project. So it's very important to, uh, it's a typical word that we exchange with, with others when we're working, we should be on the same page. This is, uh, I, I, I consider the, the, the synthesis of, of, of the work that uh, so us uh, interacting and I, I think that uh, finally the, the, the result was very good and even uh, something not expected, so was something in which uh, the quality was not defining at the beginning of the process and was uh, over the expectation at, at, at the end. Considering that uh, we cross uh, during the construction of the 120, the COVID period, and with uh, all the mess that you, you all uh, knows very well in terms of uh, um, availability of, of materials, uh, traveling and, and, and so on. So in this complexity, 
uh, you can uh, reach a good result uh, if you are prepared to do this. And I have to say that uh, in Otto, I found this uh, not uh, anytime the same, uh, the same results. Thank you, Andrea. Ulysses, you are the owner's rep on the 108. Can you tell us a bit about the experience of having a boat built in Finland? Yes, thank you, Claire. Uh, amazing to be sitting there with all the team. Um, I work so for the, the sea owner for since three years now, and uh, I work alongside with Ander so since this time. Um, I was approximately 50% of my time on the project, focused on the project the first year, approximately 70% the second year, 200% the, the last year. Um, I don't know how many thousand mail we share together on Earth and how many hundred physio conference we do, but uh, it was a lot. Um, there was not many pain on this, uh, this last uh, three years except maybe the, the long night in Finland and also the, the infinite uh, day uh, of uh, summer. I remember when uh, I went done some, uh, some citrial uh, finished at uh, midnight, debrief at uh, 3 o'clock uh, in the night with uh, some Prosecco for sure, and uh, go back to work at 7 o'clock uh, uh, on Monday. So, um, no, it was really a pleasure to to work with some, as uh, Mr. Ferriga would say, some passionate uh, people uh, like uh, like the project manager and like all the workers uh, really in Peterson. Thank you, Lisa. So now let's go. Uh, let's say it's time for announcements. Uh, there is no press conference without announcement, and the announcement we want to give here is that uh, we haven't built the second uh, 128. I mean, people are speaking about that and. Uh, uh, but uh, um, it's a reality. Uh, the, the, the boat. Uh, uh, I mean, we are molding, um, and uh, and it will come. It will be a sister to the number one, not quite different, uh, because uh, at that level of boat, you don't have serial yachts. You have uh, uh, similar yachts with a strong brand, but uh, with an offer of customization to our clients. And here we have uh, uh, Daniel Calashone, that's the owner rep for the 128 number two, and he's not sitting with us because uh, official we say now that we have a second vote in bill. So Dan, uh, do you want to say something about your experience so far? Uh, I guess I'll stand up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, this is not the first time working with uh, this uh, prestigious yard for me. I've shared a lot of uh, smiles and tears and pain and pleasure in, in the process of building boats. It's a, a, a natural mix of uh, incredible emotions and um, um, processes to get to these spectacular yachts. And as uh, jo Giovanni just mentioned, we're, um, we've confirmed the second uh, Swan 128, which I'm extremely honored and glad to be the owner's representative for. And it's a real pleasure to see uh, Number Swan having evolved over the years and, and really moved with the times and uh, taken on the challenge of building bigger, bigger, more complex and uh, um, more complex in many ways, not just volume and size, but uh, the, the technologies and we're going to be, I guess, the second hybrid uh, Swan. Um, so, and to be a certified, class certified Boat. So obviously that poses a lot of interesting challenges and let's say very early days but so far the, the process has been an absolute pleasure working with uh, Odo um, as the uh, wearing the hat of uh, Nauto, um, project manager um, and everything has been very smooth and I'm extremely excited for the, the coming years to see the spectacular, spectacular yacht come to fruition. So, yeah. Thanks Dan. Otto, you're kind of Mr. Hall number one around here because you are owner's rep on 98 number one and owner's rep on 128 number one. Um, can you tell us a bit about those experiences? Uh, yes, yes. First of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, every construction has uh, its own story. And uh, Nicola, for me, was uh, when I think about Nicola, 
I think about uh, good moments, good moments, and uh, not not easy sometimes, but uh, text people talk together. So the question is many, many different things. It's getting more to be light and faster, and uh, you know, just a few performance can be made to And uh, you know. I, at the end, uh, the boat, uh, unfortunately, wasn't saved from uh, from uh, um, Finland to, to, to the Med because uh, in the COVID time, we had to just move the ship, get the boat on the ship, uh, then uh, ship it to Mordia and uh, deliver the boat to the client. You know, and, 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 you know, the happiness of the owner was incredible. After a couple of days, we cleaned the boat because of the ship. Just when what we want to say in, in 20 knots of wind, through wind, we no problems. So I have to thank everyone here, um, Lauto for their availability and the uh, quality of the work. And uh, it was uh, in my in my heart an experience that uh, I, I would have liked to repeat. And now we repeat with the with the one twenty eight number one. The same team, I think we're doing a very good uh, work together. And, uh, you know, just uh, looking for this uh, successful uh, result again. Thank you, Raul. Thank you. Before we wrap things up today, I'd like to ask Giovanni about a new SWAT next that I've been hearing rumors about uh, currently in development. What are these projects' key features, and what do you think SWAN? So, second announcement. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, uh, we, uh, with the SWAN uh, Maxi 98, uh, we reached four units, uh, but clearly when we came with the 88, and then 108, and then the 128, they were not only concept, but both one delivered, the other in build. Uh, the owners that were looking at the 100 size, they asked us, yes, but sorry, we would like also to have that back. We would like also to have that uh, naval architecture. And so we said, okay, it's the time, after almost 10 years, that we do a new uh, 100 footer uh, maxi. And uh, yes, this maxi uh, is an evolution by itself, so we don't have the big change we had from the boats of uh, the early 2000 to the 2015. But uh, uh, there is a lot new, and uh, I'm not uh, expert enough to express this new, so I pass the word to Kamal. Um, well, uh, I think you have shared enough about all the details. The fact is that the Jan has a fantastic team that's been assembled by Leonardo over the last years, where we were able to to meet the client's requirements. The, the clients are, required, are getting more demanding, and so is the competition. So we have to work pretty hard to meet the, the specifications from the clients, and this is has translated in a lot more work for me, which I enjoy, and the team. I work with uh, with Misa and Interiors and uh, um, Lu <laughs> Lucius, yeah, on the on the, some of the details on the deck. But the fact is that we are allowed, we are capable of doing a very good work. And today, Nautor is becoming a specialist in large, in Maxi's size, and uh, the yard is able to to meet all the, these new requirements and which I have to, my work is so not only to do all shapes, which I still love to do and continue to uh, research, but um, a lot of the coordination between a, a, a great deal of ideas are coming out from the, from the yard itself. And the weights and the, you know, the performance. Performance is not only speed but also behavior. I see 
they both have to be fast, but at the same time cannot harm. And uh, they have to be safe and they have to be reliable. And that's what I do. I never been, as I said before, I never been so busy with now on these 43 years. And I'm very glad um, the work with the work we're doing. Thank you. Up, but I wanted to ask Giovanni if he had anything else up his sleeve. Yes, we have. Uh, I mean, at the end, the, the world is going such uh, bigger boats, and uh, our boats grow a lot. Uh, but I think that we have to prepare ourselves to the next step. That is the maximum that you can build with the, in the carbon technology. And uh, so the team uh, is working uh, off on. Uh, uh, a new super yacht, and uh, why not to announce that here? Uh, but uh, then postponing a detailed presentation when the project will be uh, more in detail. And uh, that uh, is a 148. That I ask, please. Okay. This will be the boat is uh, stay tuned. Uh, in a short time, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call for a, a, a dedicated meeting to present this uh, project. Okay. Well, I guess that's, that's it. I'd like to thank the panel. I'd like to thank all of you for coming. And would also like to ask if anybody has any questions. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you at the Nauter Swan, Swan Stand and, uh, or the 108. Just do you have any details on the hybrid system on the Swan 128L2? How it's different to uh, the first system? Michael is the best person to give you an answer. You, you need to keep people here a long time, John. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, uh, the, the reality is uh, quite, uh, the, the proven architecture that the market is requesting now, so a serial hybrid with a uh, full electrical motor and generator for, uh, for hydrogen generation uh, in the water. Uh, and um, the partner we are working with is Danfoss. Uh, and uh, okay, then two high power generators uh, coupled with that uh, to uh, recharge uh, the battery section, high voltage battery section. Um, so, yes, yeah, serial hybrid architecture. We always like to stress that uh, hybrid is not a fashion, it's a very rational uh, way of powering a ship because this is a ship. It needs to be certified, the certification need, especially this will be also a charter classified boat. So the, the uh, regulations to meet are becoming more and more uh, strict and careful. Uh, so when sizing an hybrid, we always look at the profile mission the owner uh, is going. And of course, uh, we believe that the hotel in silent uh, is always the leading characteristic for the mission profile. The propulsion, yes, you can benefit from uh, uh, propulsion, but we know that uh, the range uh, has the diesel at the point behind that. And uh, okay, this is about the, the overall concept. Uh, we'll be, of course, happy to show and discuss more when we'll be more close to the uh, to the launch of the boat and, and the construction itself. Hope, hope enough and not too much. But thanks for asking because. Uh, it's an important topic we're looking at. And then, as Van introduced, we look at the hybrid propulsion, we look at the electrification, but in a very wise way. Filling a ship with batteries is not a way of going green. Absolutely. We also look a lot at the process, of course, up in Finland, the way we build, the way we work. Uh, sustainability is much bigger than just putting batteries on board. And Curiosities. I would like to, just to make a, a, final, a couple of final remarks. 
by thanking everybody to, uh, for being here today and uh, sharing our tools together. Uh, I cannot tell you how important uh, it is for everybody involved uh, a confrontation with uh, many of you, with the press, uh, their ability to criticize uh, constructively, and uh, they often bring to the table so many uh, inputs and, uh, and the stimulation for us, uh, for all the team working on this. I think, uh, I think it was very important uh, today also because uh, we really were able to share with all of you such an important moment of the company where we're really making a finally concrete and uh, um, defined statement of what SWANS is in the maximum world. And that is not a given. It's a hard work. And while I'm thanking uh, specifically their owners rep, also for uh, what they said uh, and uh, the message of how it's important to liaise the owner uh, with uh, the needs of the factory which was emphasized. And I cannot tell you how important your role in making this happen is. I would also like to thank the <coughs> words of Herman saying that he had never been busy with the yard uh, as much as in the 43 years, as much as uh, these days. And uh, for me, this is a, an extremely important message. When uh, I was deciding to purchase Nato Swan, the, uh, it was not a given. And the only person that I wanted to make sure would stay with Nato Swan was uh, Herman. And he was more convinced to leave the company than stay inside. And I had to convince him <coughs> of, of our uh, genuine and determined uh, intention of bringing uh, Nato Swan to the next level. And, and it was not a given, it took a lot of work, a lot of confrontation, because we had to upgrade, he had to do his job as well. <laughs> and, uh, and finally see that things uh, uh, are, have, have happened and they're there, it is an incredible reward for everybody that has dedicated so much energy to making Nato Swan what it is today. So thank you for being with us and sharing this uh, such important uh, moment.